Frosted. Welcome to my channel. This is Bobo Stitching Quilt. My name is Jessie. Uh, for everyone who is new or returning, in whatever capacity you are showing up for the today, welcome in. I'm so glad to have you join me today. I hope that we are all going to have a fantastic time just getting some chit chats about cross stitch today. Um, every once in a while I do throw in a quilt into these videos, but they are typically in separate videos and not very frequent, honestly. So, y'all, it's been a minute since my last video, mostly because I did Monogamous May in, um, and I didn't really have that much to show you, so I decided to wait until the end of the month to, to record. Um, but seriously, y'all, this is my third, third time recording this floss too. So I originally recorded on May 31st in the morning and then in the afternoon I went into you know edit and um, about the seven minute mark my audio went away and it was gone. It was just not attached to the video or anything like that. Okay you know I'm a roll with the punches kind of person so I was just like okay you know so got everything recollected and everything and went to go record the video again in the afternoon <laughs> uh, with afternoon light and everything and um, promptly went into that evening to edit and the audio is fine it recorded but it's disconnected so basically I'm not really sure what happened but about I was filming but then the audio was like four minutes later in the video right like so like it picked up like in the four minute mark like somehow it didn't start recording the audio until four minutes later but it was attached but the video was from the very beginning I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right either way just say disconnected video audio there the whole video Tears, tears, not literal, figuratively. But I was like, no, <laughs> no. So today is now Friday, June 4th, and I am now recording this video for the third time. I have made some changes to my audio settings, and uh, let's hope for the best. The, the Both videos were about 45 minutes long. I anticipate this one will be about the same. Um, so if it doesn't record, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we'll just do a live stream or something. I, I don't know. So wish me luck. I guess you're here. If you're here, if you're watching this, it worked. <laughs> so anyways, hope everyone's having a good day. So I did take today off. You're like Friday. What's going on? I took today off. So not going to lie. This is just a little mini life update. I'll give more at the end, but, um, I'm a little burnt out. Um, so, um, so y'all know this, that I did have, well, if you're new, you don't know this, but as a recap, um, I live in Southeast Texas, um, outside of Houston, and in February, in mid-February, we had a pretty significant weather event, um, which was winter storm named Yuri, and um, we had significant damage in our home. And so we ended up living in a hotel for like a month and we had to go through renovations. It took another month and a half after that and um, it was chaos. So, and um, around, so, so there's that personal side. I work in legal aid for, for my new folks. I work in legal aid and we do a lot of legal assistance that's disaster related. Um, and I manage pro bono attorneys. So those are attorneys in the private bar who have volunteered to um, take on cases for individuals who cannot afford low-income households. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, and so I had to kind of do that preparatory work to help our clients in the aftermath of that disaster. And then, of course, just our regular work that we do all the time. And then my supervisor, my the person in charge of the entire program for private attorney involvement, um, went on extended leave. And um, about, not at the exact same time, but within a few weeks after the event. And um, and so 
I'm her backup. And so I've kind of assumed a lot of her responsibilities. And so it's been, it's been busy. It's been tiring. It's, there's been a lot happening. So, so I'm a little burnt out, um, in general, personally and, and everything. And we still haven't even unpacked. Like the room looks like it looks like it's unpacked, but like if you see like the edges, it's bad. Like the rest of the house has got like boxes everywhere. Like it's so um I'm try I'm cre I'm giving myself short weeks. Um so for the next few weeks I've taken or and included last week, I've been taking like one or two days off in the week, giving myself like a three, four day work week and um in the hopes that I will be able to rest, one, like the most important thing is to rest, but also to unpack, all right? Like, so the goal for today, like today, the reason why I took today off was to put together my quilt studio, my craft studio, since I'm a multi-crafter. And um, so that's the plan for today. I had not planned on having to film a floss tube video, so I had planned to do that on Monday. But I'm going to go ahead and record today and work on that. And so because I had taken the day off, I was like, well, why wait till the weekend to record? Let's record today. So with that, that's my little mini life update. More later. But let's get started. And my nose is very itchy. It's been very rainy here the whole week in in Texas. Like I think the whole state's just been getting out. Well, not the whole state, like half the state. It's like the whole states or other states, but not for us. Um, but the... Um, and so my allergies are just all, I may hit the pause and go do something about this. But anyways, let's get going. All right. So as I said, in May, I only, I did two projects and then there's a little asterisk because at the very end, I did start something for June. Um, but since we did have, since we are a few days into June, you get the benefit of a little bit of the beginning of June work that I'll get to show you. But um, I worked on two projects, which was uh, my Monogamous May project with the Cinderella Wishes Upon a Dream, and um, which also happened to be one of my WIPGO um, projects that was called. And then, of course, I worked on my second WIPGO project, which is um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch Hello Pumpkin. And so for those of you who do not know, WIPGO, um, so WIP stands for a work in progress. And WIPGO is basically whim, bingo for your whips. It is a Facebook group started by Jessie Marie of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She has both a YouTube video and a Instagram. Um, I will link everything I discuss, projects, uh, Facebook groups, Foss tubers, everybody will get linked down below. Uh, so, so you can go and find the group if you wish. With WIPGO, it, you create a bingo board and every month, um, Jessie Marie calls two numbers and you work on whatever the project is that's in your box and whatever goals you make are your goals to make, right? So you can decide what the goal is for that particular project. Everyone does it just a little bit differently. That works for them because it's your goals. So do whatever you want, right? And um, in my particular case, what I did was that I picked six projects. Two of them are my full coverage pieces, and four of them are projects that I feel like if I focus on them and kind of rev into them, I'll finish them if I give some dedicated attention to it. Now, my goal for the month that it's called is 10 hours on the project. It's not a lot that doesn't, unless I'm at the near end of the project. It won't finish it, but the hope is, is that by working on it and focusing on it during the week, um, that I'll get a lot of progress done in it. So that's what I do for my whip go, but everyone does it a little different. Some people, their goal is a finish. Some people is stitch count. Some people it's like, just work on it. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes it's a motif, you know, if it's a sampler of some type. So, um, it's never too late to join a whip go. Um, you can, you know, sometimes I see in the group people have questions like, oh, how do I start now? And it's like, whatever you want to do. Some people I've seen come in at this point in time in the mid-year and um, and start from the get-go. They, they look at the past called numbers and they work those goals all the way through because you don't have to do them in the month that it's called, right? You can do whatever. And then whenever you get a bingo, then you reward yourself if you choose to reward yourself. I reward myself anyways. Like, I just buy things. So it's not really... Although I do have a technical reward when I hit a bingo. But, uh, 
know a little bit about me. I'm just like instant gratification. But it's like, um, and so it's, so it's, it's, so you can do it at any time. I've also seen people come in and this is what I did when I joined last year, which was, I, I was a few months late and, um, I just blocked out those numbers as the, the blocks as though I did it and just started from the month I joined and moved forward, you know? So, and that's okay, you know, because it's a hobby. It's here to make us happy. Do what makes you happy. So with that, let me show you where we are. Um, so first, let's do my smaller piece. This is hello. So hopefully if I do everything right, um, pictures of what I'm working on. So this is Hello Pumpkin Caterpillar Cross Stitch. And um, in the month of May, I only worked on it for three days and I put in 1,063 stitches total um, in here. And the goal, so it always wants, it wants to center me, so hold on. Whee! Okay. So um, I ended up working on the owl and two of these leaves. So I worked on this owl in this leaf and that leaf. And there's a little couple of sprinklings in there. So that's what I got done in the month. Um, I'm using a different camera, uh, a video recording software. So in addition to making sure my audio settings are correct, I'm also hopeful that I can figure out how to use this video screen. I'm like, ooh, I'm like the Phantom of the Opera right now. Anyways, so, um, but, but that's where we are. I love this. I love Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I feel like it's a, uh, these patterns are so bright and lively, and I really do enjoy working on them. And they're fun. They're not fast stitches. At least for me, they're not. Um, but when I work on it, it just makes me happy. I'm just always smiling when I work on it. So, um, but that's where we are on Caterpillar Cross Stitch, on Hello Pumpkin, not Caterpillar Cross Stitch, on Hello Pumpkin. And you're going to hear all my noises of putting things away because I, I'm going to show you something and in order for you to see what it looks like, I got to put things away. <laughs> Tease on a preview that's coming. And now the grand finale for the month of May is Cinderella Wishes Upon a Dream. Um... Oh, Hello Pumpkin is, um, I purchased the kit from Caterpillar Cross Stitch, so I'm doing everything with the call for fabric and DMC, and I am doing it with a 28 count, even leave two over two. So, what's next? Now I'm working on Cinderella Upon a, Wishes Upon a Dream. It happens to be my oldest whip, and so uh, I worked on it exclusively, except for that little bit of Hello Pumpkin, um, for the whole month, it was very useful because I just used it for my, uh, for Magical Stitches, uh, which is a Facebook group that just kind of has challenges and reading challenges. And, um, and the, the theme of the year is Percy Jackson. And so we read a Percy Jackson book every month. And then there's homework assignments each week where you work on a whip, a project based on a, a, a prompt. And, um, and if you don't have a project for the prompt, you work on your oldest whip. And so for me, this worked well. So all my homework assignments for um, Magical Stitches was on Cinderella. And, um, but thinking about Magical Stitches, if you've been here before, or you've heard other floss tubers talk about it, they do close it off because you are assigned to teams um, and, and your stitches count towards a team, but you can come in at any time. And I think that you can join and then like your stitches are helper stitches until you are assigned to a team. But I do believe that they are getting ready to do new team assignments for people who, because I think they do it in the mid-year, don't hold me to it. I'm pretty sure in July there's an opportunity for people to join teams. So if you've seen this and you've heard people talk about it, you've heard me talk about it, and you're like, that sounds like a fun way to help pick projects and move progress forward. Um, go ahead and join the group and, um, you know, and even if you're not part of a team, you can probably still do the prompts if you want, I'm going to assume. So, but in addition to the homework assignments, there's monthly challenges as well as year long challenges. Uh, so it's, um, 
I find it fun. It's a it's a nice way to kind of if I'm not sure what I'm going to work on, but sometimes it's also trying to be creative because I have focus pieces and I'm like, ooh, how can I fit it in? <laughs> right? Like, hmm, do I have? Do I really want to work on this? Can this fit in some way? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. So anyway, so um, so I ended up working on Cinderella Wishes Upon a Dream for the entire month, and I put in a total of four thousand six hundred and ninety one stitches into Cinderella Wishes Upon a Dream. This is a kit from MCG Textiles. Unfortunately, it is out of print, though I have seen it in eBay or on eBay. So ready? Here we are. It's going to look great. <laughs> so my goal for the month of May was to finish a page. Now, here's the thing. I wish the U.S. actually called our pages things, our paper size things. We have letter, leather, what, not leather, letter and legal are our two paper sizes. Um, and in Europe, rest of the world is just, it's just us. It's all just us. You know, they have like the A3s and A4s and you say that and that means something. I don't know what that means. But it means something. Um, but we don't have that. So anyway, so the paper size on this is not, um, it's it's two letter size pages, but one big piece of paper. <laughs> it's basically what it is. And, um, and so my goal was to finish one half of that. Um, and, and I did it. I accomplished it. So this whole length from here to here is 150 stitches. And so right here in this markation is the 80. So that's zero to 80. And so I, I made it over. I made it across the fold, so to speak, except for this little bit right here is still just a little bit on the other side of the fold. And then some confetti. I have been doing some um, back stitching and knots as I go, but I'm not quite done um, on that. And... But, but this is where we are. I'm so happy with with the progress that I made. Um, again, this is my oldest whip, so it will get pulled out again um, for magical stitches throughout the year when I don't have a prompt and, and I want to work on it. In fact, the assignment for this week is on your oldest whip. I haven't started working on it. We'll see if I can make it. But um, it's um, But yeah, there we are. But this is on 18 Count Ada. Um, and using the kit provided floss, um, which I don't know what it is. I think it's Candelar. Um, doing two over one. I'm doing those poses. I usually take a picture, y'all. Like, like, like that's the pro tip, right? If you want your picture to look decent in your little thumbnail, if you're making flossing videos, you just take a picture and you just upload the picture. But recently, I've gotten a little bit lazy where I've forgotten to take a picture, and so I just let... YouTube pick one. It's funny when you pick one. It's hilarious. Anyways, but yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's where we are on, on Cinderella. Now, what is that asterisk that I talked about? Well, it'd been a minute since I've been monogamous stitching and um, I forgot that it can be a little boring. <laughs> so, um, so on May 30th, I finished the last assignment for for magical stitches and so I was like you know what I'm done tomorrow I'm gonna be record like right this is my thought process May 30th I was like I'm gonna be recording the floss tube tomorrow um I don't really want to start another assignment um, I already started putting together my notes on everything and and I was like I'm gonna go ahead and not work on it anymore so on May 30th I had a new start because um Sailor Moon Eternal came out yesterday on Netflix. So I am a Sailor Moon fan. If you have not seen this video before or me before, um, one of my full coverage pieces is Sailor Moon Squad by Tilton Krauss, um, artwork by Daniel Cordick. And um, I love Sailor Moon. Now, I was in high school when it came out. So like it's, you know, but I, I think of it as I'm an anime fan. To me, it was good anime. I mean, it was the, the the 90s was like 90s anime, but I, I like anime and I like the story. I think it's, I think Sailor Moon changes everything. I actually tried to find a documentary 
about the impact of Sailor Moon on on um, girl or women led anime, and I'm really kind of surprised that they didn't have any um, because like I've seen a lot of girl focus or women focus mostly girls mostly for for young girls. Um, Young people. Let's be real. Why is it girl focused? Young people, but with female centered characters. Um, and they all are inspired and derived from Sailor Moon. Like the transformations all look like Sailor Moon. I love She Ra on Netflix and then the, the reboot of She Ra. I love it. Like it's one of my, I, I, I really enjoy it. Her transformation. It's Sailor Moon, y'all. Go compare. So, it's, um, but I love Sailor Moon. And in anticipation of Sailor Moon Eternal, which is the fourth story in the, the fourth arc in the, in, there's five arcs. Actually, technically, I guess there's six, but it's a kind of, one's like a little standalone story. Um, and... So my husband and I decided to re-watch Sailor Moon Crystal. Those are the three TV ships and series that are on Hulu here in the States. And um, so we decided to go ahead and re-watch that. And we, we watched it in the dubbed English version. Um, I typically watch it in the Japanese reading subtitles first. And then I watch it in the dub. So we re-watched it with the dubbed. Um, and I was like, well, I got to work on something. And... Here's the thing, though. Sailor Moon Squad, I'm doing it one over one on 25 count even weave. I need to have a magnifier glass. It's it's intense, right? Not intense, but for me it is. Um, and I wanted to work on something a little bit easier, so to speak. But the month of June, I um, joined a Facebook group a while ago um, in anticipation of Stitch Mania's Facebook group um archiving so stitch mania the facebook group has been archived um katie and garrett um decided that they were not able to manage the um the, the page anymore for their personal reasons and they're allowed to archive their page and um, i'm very grateful for 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 what they've done and what they've done for the for the cross stitch community really and, um, but I belong to several, as I've already mentioned too, I belong to several Facebook groups, um, already about cross-stitching, but they're usually focused. I belong to a nerdy one and magical stitches and Whipco and some individual designer pages, but I really wanted one that was generic, right? Like a general cross-stitch page that talks about everything. All right, because even if I don't stitch something, I love seeing different projects. Like, I, like I, who, you should see how many people I follow on Instagram. Like, I love seeing progress pictures and what people are working on. I'm always just like, ooh, I'll never stitch that. But I love seeing it. I'm never going to be those super high count people. Those people that are doing like 101, like on like 40 count and stuff like that. What? How can you see? Anyways, but like, <laughs> you know, but I, so I joined the generic, not generic, but it's a, a general um, cross-stitching group and it's called stitch all the things if you do want to join it's a fun little group it looks like it's um it's inclusive it's accepting it seems to be fun and um, there are questions you have to answer so be sure you answer the questions or making sure that weird people i shouldn't say weird because i'm weird but like people who are not into cross-stitching are not getting in basically they want to be sure they they keep the uh, the membership for people who actually want to be there and um so, so go ahead and give it a join but in june they are doing a catch up on all your sal's sal so that's their month-long event that they are doing and the hashtag is sal sal and so i thought well you know i purchased this a while ago but i hadn't started it this is my long way of getting to what i started but it took me like 10 minutes i'm exaggerating it all makes sense. It does. But um, I was like, well, since I'm watching Sailor Moon and I'm getting ready to watch Eternal, isn't this the best time with catch up on all your Sal Sal to start Lunar Princess Sal? 
Exactly. That's what I thought too. And um, so I'm working on Lunar Princess Sal. Um, this design is by Sleeping Luna Designs. Um, and again, everything is either up here. So again, it was a new start. And here is where I am. Now, since I started this, this is a week's worth of progress. And, um, and because the, because the whole design is completed, I did a middle start. And, and so I am working on the rose, which represents tuxedo mask. And I love this. This is a really, look at that rose. Look at the detail on that. One color, I, you know, I have just a little bit of the accent color in there. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, this is really great. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to end up putting it away after Sailor Moon, after I watch Eternal, which I'm watching it today. Yes, are you wondering how I couldn't watch it yesterday? We, I still watch Grey's Anatomy, y'all, and last night was the season finale of Grey's Anatomy, so we watch Grey's um, instead of Sailor Moon. And, and also because um, it, we thought it would be a good Friday night, date night for me and my husband. We'll go buy some food, we'll come back, and then we'll do the double feature because it's two movies um, tonight um, for our Friday night evening. So... But anyways, but that's where we are on it. Um, I am doing this on 32 Count Lugana, um, which is my preferred fabric. Uh, Phantom by Pictivist Plus. Y'all, it's been a minute since I've worked on dark fabric. And you do forget like how hard it is. <laughs> and I've been working on Ada for the entire month of, of May. And so going back to an even weave of some form, and you have to remember to do count two over two, and it's on this black fabric is like, it was not fun. Uh, I was like, what's going on? That, that was for, I frogged quite a bit those first few stitches because I'm like, am I counting this right? And then like, and then I was like, then I had like a freak out. Like, I'm like, is it squared? Like, did I square this? Am I stitching on the bias? Like, <laughs> and so, um, but anyways, it, you know, if you have never worked on dark fabric before, don't let that frighten you. Um. I probably, you're going to see another update. I would probably recommend that you, if you've never done dark fabric ever, you probably should start with an Ada because it is easier to see the holes. But you know the solution for it is just really good lighting um, for anyone who's like, I've never done this before. I love seeing dark fabric and I don't know what to do. It's just good lighting. Um, there's a couple of ways that you can do it and you're just going to have to figure out what works best for you. But really, one of the best ways is just to do an under lighting, right? To do, you know, um, I don't actually have a, a, a table lamp. I was thinking about buying one because I'm a quilter and it is actually very useful for quilting projects to have a, a flat table light. Um, and so, so if you have a light going underneath, you can see the holes better that way. Uh, because it, even in a linen or an even weave. So, um, and that will help a lot with you kind of figuring it out. Now, I don't stitch with a light underneath. I stitch with a light behind me, and then I hold it up. So um, so I do have my, I use a stand for the dark fabrics, and I have basically the stand where it's clipped over here, and I have it pretty straight up and down. Not in front of my face, because I'm watching TV, but like it's usually about right here. And then with that, I'm able to see the light. Um, and sometimes when it got really bad, I just took out my ring light and just have it right behind it, like also on this angle over here behind it, and then my light behind it, and then you're able to see everything. So that's my tip on how to stitch on a dark fabric um, if you're worried about being able to see on it. It is hard. It is. It, it, it takes a while to get used to, but don't let it deter you if you think that your design is going to look better on a darker fabric. It, it, it's, it's doable. You just got to figure out how to get your lighting set up in such a way that it works. And frankly, if you don't have a table light, you don't have fancy lamps and stuff like that, and if you're not using your phone, just just put your phone down and use the flashlight on your phone. That's what I did when I was like, you know, when I was getting started. And I was like, oh, you know. So anyway, so that's my tip on that. So with that, I do have a couple of other progress things to show you because again, I'm doing Stitch All the Sal Sal. Um, and so I did have a couple of things that I have started since then. Um, the first one is, um, there's, 
So I'm sure if you've watched more than one floss tube that you have seen, um, hopefully that went, my camera just went, my screensaver kicked on. Um, but you have probably seen in some other floss tube videos, some people have mentioned the 25-7 challenge. So stitch on something for 25 minutes or 25 stitches, seven days, uh, I think is what it's called. So, so this is something similar, but not. <laughs> so I am doing a 30 for 30 creating challenge, which is hosted by Crafting Geek on um, Instagram. Again, everything will be mentioned down below. And so I am going to be working on the Trick or Treat sampler from Mary Englebright's book, Cross Stitch Across the Season. Hopefully I have a picture right here. And my, I have already done the centerpiece. I've already done the Trick or Treater. Um, and, and so now I am working on that border now, in that border, um, there are 26 uh, candy corn. I keep calling them acorns to my husband. He keeps giving me like a look. He's like, you know that's candy corn, right? So, uh, there's 26 candy corn and 9 ghosts. So, my plan for the 30 for 30 creating is to do a candy corn a day. Um, it's not quite 30 minutes. It's it's about 45 minutes of cross stitching for me. Um, so my goal is to do one candy corn a day for the month of June. And on the weekends, on the weekend days, so on Saturday and Sunday, I will do one ghost in addition to the candy corn. So, uh, and then what will happen hopefully is that that means the border of the actual motifs will be done on June 26, right? 26, 26. And that gives me the three days left to either catch up if I, if I need to catch up on anything um, and to do the actual border that's, that's there. And so um, I, I'm going to assume it's going to take me three days to do that. I stitch it about a hundred stitches an hour. Um, and so my guess is, is that will probably take me two, three days to do those. Um, if I'm focusing on the 30 minutes and 45 minutes, uh, like obviously if I was to just do just the whole thing, stitch. but again, this is a do what you want kind of challenge, right? So I started working on it and because today is June 4th, I've worked on it for three days. I have done, and you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen all this. So my apologies for not having anything new in the floss tube, uh, <laughs> but I have worked on three of the candy corns. So there they are. And um, I am missing a color. I thought I had everything. So my suspicion is, is that it's probably in a kit somewhere. Like I pulled just the, pulled the whole thread drop and I dropped it into kit someplace. Um, but I don't know. I may go searching for it or I just may go to Michael's and just buy that one's game. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> but I'll go back and fill in um, at some point in time. But, but that's where we are. It takes me about 45 minutes to do one of these candy corns. And, um, but yeah, I'm doing this on 14 count Black Ada. Basic Black Ada. I think it's a Zweigart. Yeah, it's a Zweigart. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, there we are. And it lives in my Love You More Snoopy, or Peanuts More accurately, it's not just Snoopy. Peanuts, um, full st standard size, full, full, not standard, full size Love You More Snoopy. So there's that. I also have a second new start and which is I am working on the trans pride tapestry. It's pride month y'all whoop 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 and on this channel love is love is love so love. All right so um and in celebration of trans pride um or not trans pride pride month I'm doing the trans pride tapestry I'm doing the stitch along that's being hosted by Michelle Bindi. So the hashtag is Transtastic Sal, um, but also the designer um, is um, also has a another hashtag, which is Stitch for Pride 2021. Um, and so this is where I got to. So new start one day um, start. This is. I, I'm doing a middle start, so I'm working on the unicorn. Like, let's go into that unicorn. So, um, so what am I doing? This is on um, 16 count Ada. This is Hugh 
from Fortnite Fabric. That's right. This is my fabric from Rainbow Stitching um, box from Black Needle Society. I love seeing all the unboxings and how different the fabric looks. Mine definitely mostly was the blues and the purple tones, which I thought was perfect for the Trans Pride tapestry but you can see I have some yellows and everything so so let me be sure I get you all the information so the trans pie tapestry the pattern is by D20 but is the artwork is the original artwork by Carrie Nakin or Nakin and um, and so the proceeds from the sale of this pattern um, are going towards um, organizations that obviously are supporting of the community and um, it's a nice, it's it's big by the way, it's 193 by 193 um, size. So I don't think this is going to be a finish for the month, but I am going to continue to work on it um, throughout the throughout the month as part of my South South. So, um, but that's it. That's my third start for the week. And that's it. That's it on, on current whips and pro current whips so my current whips and now my three new starts that I had um, since we last saw so let's segue into plans at this point um, oh and I am doing everything because it's an ADA I'm doing two over one and I'm doing everything with the called for except that the unicorn that is called for the diamante the DMC diamante I don't have I, I went to my local needle shop because they were open last week, and um, and I happened to be able to go, but they didn't have the Diamante in stock, so I am going to be using. Oh no, you're not going to be able to see it. It's too washed out. It's too washed out. Let's see if I can go closer. This is going to be Snow by Karen. Ew. Hopefully, you can see it a little bit better with this super up close. But that is. Um, what I'm going to be doing the the unicorn in. I think it's going to look great, um, sparkly and everything. So, um, so that's my update on on that. So now well, let's switch to um, Sailor Moon. By the way, it, or Lunar Princess is living in my 805 bag for my geishas for Japan and. Um, Unfortunately, I don't think I have a project bag for my for Trans Pride Tapestry. Yeah, it's in a Ziploc bag. Anyways, all right, so what are my plans for the rest of June? As I mentioned multiple times already, that I am doing the Sal Sal, and so I'm going to try to catch up on some Sal's. So, but first, let me show you. I made a purchase, so this is a little bit of a haul, but not really. Um, I purchased this basket. It's a woven basket. It's a, a part of the Con Marie line from Container Store. This is the small size. Um, I wanted to kind of corral everything. I have been putting everything in my three tier cart, but it wasn't really quite working for me. And I wanted something that would be where they wouldn't accidentally fall out if I took things out and everything. And it created a confined space. And so. As you can see, it's not quite full because I've had some th things taken out. All my little projects are sitting in here. What I like about it is that it gives me a finite space, right? Like once this is full, full, and it is already full, like, like maybe I shouldn't get so many whips. By the way, I have a second one that does, it does fit in the three-tier cart, by the way. So like it's sitting in there where it has my kitted projects. So projects that are not whips right? These are works in progress. I've started on them. I'm actually making progress on them. I have another bag, uh, another one, which has my kitted one. So these are projects that I've purchased, patterns that I've purchased for which I've already gotten the fabric um, and or floss put together. So I'm in some form of kitting them up. And so, and I keep them separately. So that way I don't accidentally use the floss that I purchased for them or the pat or the fabric that I purchased for them in a different project. Although I have poached from them. Um, but most of my project bags are from two companies. I have one that I made, this one, one I made myself, and then I have, um, 805 stitcher bags, which fit perfectly right in here. And then the 805, and then the Love You More Studio book sleeves. 
fit right in here perfectly. So I love it. And now sits next to my stitching spot. I'm ready to stitch and I don't know what to do. I just pick it up, stick it on the couch, bloop, 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 bloop through it like a filing cabinet. It's great. Anyways, so um, I am going to be working on more sows. <laughs> so the whole month of June is going to be focused on sows. And the first one that I'm really going to be trying to get done is um, the Stitching Book Club. So Stitching Book Club, the next book is starting later on this month, I think in a week, maybe two weeks, but sometime in mid-June. Um, Little Women is going to begin. I have the fabric for it. I'm ready to go. I have the floss. Um, here's my fabric for Little Women. And so I thought maybe I should finish Sense and Sensibility. Yeah, doesn't that make sense? Yeah. So Sense and Sensibility, unfortunately, got put to the wayside because I was in the middle of the renovations and living in the hotel. And that's when all the parts were coming out for Sense and Sensibility. And so it did not get done. I've only done part one. And the goal is to finish part two and three before Little Women starts. So I'm going to try to dedicate some solid time to it. But this is where I was the last time that from where I So this is just to be able to give you some progress pictures. So this is where I, when I'm doing it. Um, part one, I'm doing this with the called for DMC two over one. And um, it's 32 count Belfast ice blue from Swigart. So it's not dyed or anything. It's just the ice blue from Swigart. Um, it's a little washed out because of the, how light the blue is, but in person, the white of the flowers really do stick out. I would say though, if you were thinking, oh, I kind of like the ice blue here, let's see, I can get a little bit closer. I like the ice blue fabric. I like that lighter blue. Um, it may look actually really great with the color conversion that she provided if you were to stitch it on white fabric. Um, and so, um, I'm obviously not going to change it. I'm going to keep to the, to the original call for, but, um, but she does have this in a color conversion for white fabric. If you did not want to stitch on a blue fabric. Um, but I do think that it would have looked good either way. Cause how, how fine this, this blue actually is. Um, and so, so that is the goal. I think I can do it. Um, I say that then at the end. We should have that as a challenge like do your your post plans like did you actually succeed why why go why do that why make yourself sad um these are just goals right stitch what you want it lives in my love you more this is the smaller one the smaller size i think this is the standard with my little because it's stitching book club it's all in my office supplies worth so um so that's that's plan number one the second one that I have planned is, or the next one, not the second, because I have more than the next one I have to plan is Lindy Stitches Funky Menagerie. So that also was finished in the time of February, and I was not able to work on it. So, um, so that so the goal is to try to finish that one too in the month of June. I think again, these are basically two projects that I have planned. Um, those are the only styles I'm behind on. Um, technically that I started when the South started and then got behind. And so here I am on Funky Menagerie and, um, oops. So I finished part one and part two and I started working on part three. Um, and so again, I think this is another one. I just spent a weekend on it or a week on it. I think I can get it done. Um, and so that will be the goal. There is a mistake right here. I still can't decide. So the ostrich, the entire ostrich is one stitch over. You'll see that he's hanging out next to this creature here. Right? So, um, I don't think I'm going to frog him. I think I'm going to leave him. Like, who cares? They're friends. They can touch each other. And um, I'm doing uh, Funky Menagerie on 32 Count Flax Linen. Um, this was the called for fabric. And I purchased it from... Um, from Lindy Stitches from Stephanie herself, and this is my card. Yeah, 32 count flax linen by Swigar. So, so that is what I'm stitching it on two over two with the called for DMC. No conversions there at all. Um, so that is the two that are that I was working on. Now the third thing is my whip go. So this, my first, um, not first, 
my whip go goes called where the number one and 17 were called for the month of June. They both happen to be the exact same project. Again, as I mentioned, I do, I put six projects on, which there's more, there's 25 squares. So all my projects are on there twice. And so one and 17, the exact same project, which is Happily Ever After by Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And um, I don't, I've had the kit, I, I purchased the kit a while ago. My suspicion is I purchased the stitch along. I don't remember. I might have purchased it after it was done. But um, at one point, that was a stitch along, right? So <laughs> it fits. It fits into my stitch all the sal sal's, even though I didn't do it as part of the stitch along. I did. I, I just, um, I purchased it on its own. Um, and this is where all I've done, which is the little banner for happily ever after. And, um, I am doing this with the kit fabric. So it's 28 count crystal helix, uh, 28 count linen um, crystal helix by Picture This Plus. Um, so there's a little bit of a shine to it, which you're not really quite seeing on the camera. Um, so my goals is 10 hours on each project. So it'll be 20 hours is what the goal would be on Happily Ever After. I don't know if I'm actually gonna count the time. My minimum goal or happily ever after for this month is to do um, the two stories that are that that flank the banner. That's going to be my goal for um, for happily ever after for the month of June. Um, if it turns out that those really did take me very little amount of time to do, can't imagine that. But if it really ends up being that it was short, then I'll 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 do more. But that's the plan for happily ever after um, for the month of June. After that, I have two new starts that are planned because if you haven't noticed, I do like a caterpillar hello seasons and I am doing the book club, which means that in addition to Little Women, which will be starting in a couple of weeks, so hopefully Sense and Sensibility is done before then, I am also going to be starting, even though part one is already out, Hello Sunshine. So part one did come out last weekend. I have not started it yet. Still fully in the kit, everything. Um, but the plan is to start it this weekend. I'm going to do my best to keep up with it. We'll see, right? Um, I got a lot of plans going on. And and these are not like one day stitches, right? Her her parts are big. Like they, you know. And I think they come out every two weeks. I think is when the parts are coming out. So, so that is my next start. So that's it. I think that's everything. That's a lot. I'm ambitious in June. Wait till you see my July plans. July plans are crazy. Crazy. Um, I will continue to work on Cinderella if it makes sense for Magical Stitches. Um, but we'll see. Um, again, the, the assignment for this week is to work on your oldest whips. I'm going to try to do that. But we'll see. Um, I come from a school of thought of stitch what you want when you want. See we. So, you know, I'll do what I want. I'm not going to feel bad. Progress is progress. Let's see. Is that everything? Do, 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 do. Let me look at my notes real quick. That's everything. Haul. I did purchase some stuff that haven't arrived yet, so I'll show you when they when they arrive. So that's my tease on that. But I did get two more project bags. I may be slightly addicted to the 805 Stitcher project bags. Just maybe. But what am I going to do? Like, she keeps posting and having really cute bags. I don't know why I don't buy from other people. I do shop for other bags, but um, I know exactly why I do it. I like uniformity. Like I like things to be the same. Like I'm actually really mad at myself that I have the smaller version of this instead of the standard. All of my other Love You Mores are the are the big are the big size ones. I like everything to be the same. Let's just acknowledge that. So once I picked one that I liked, I want them all to be the same. That's why I'm buying them all from the A5 Stitcher. So really what I need to do is to check measurements and then see if they're the same. If there's something wrong with me. Kind of OCD that way, I guess. I don't know if that's OCD. I shouldn't say that because that's not nice. Um, anyways, these are the two bags that I got. I am a huge Mary Ingle Bright fan. You may not have noticed this about me, but I got... A bowl of ch a chair bullies. She had that. Look at that. Isn't that cute? 
and this is the, the inside with the, the cherries me. and what the 805 stitcher does is that she gives you a, a matching um, needle minder and that says the matching needle minder Kind of cute. So, um, so there's that one. I don't know what's going to live in that one yet. Um, something fun, I would think. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And then the second one I got was wait for this. How can I not buy this bag? Dogs and costumes. Yeah, dogs and costumes. Um, uh, and now I have. I've had dachshunds my entire adult in life, so I had to get a dachshund. Now, my current dachshund, um, my girl now, her name is Jordan. She is a dachshund mix with a Jack Russell, so she's a jackshund, but obviously there's that. And we have a Chihuahua Corgi mix. She is more Corgi-like than she, she's the size of a Chihuahua, like her body, like her full-on size is the size of a Chihuahua. But she's got the body of a corgi. Um, and the only other thing that's kind of her face, um, she's got a shorter snout like a chihuahua as opposed to the longer snout like a, like a corgi. And so, but obviously there's this corgi right here, right? So, I love this. The inside of the bag is green. Now... I had hoped that the matching needle liner was going to be either the dachshund or the, or the corgi, but that's okay. I got the German Shepherd. There he goes. Isn't that cute, though? Mm, cute. So, okay, so that's all I got for haul. I do have some patterns that I'll show you when they when they come in. Um, I was told that they were slightly behind in the shipping from my little my little needle shop. But um, that's really it on my full-on stitching content. I have one little life update that is stitching related. So if you want to stick around, it is slightly stitching related. Um, so we bought a couch. And now, how is this stitching related? Well, because it's my stitching spot, right? And um, so our couch actually survived the damage from the storm. Because there was an only room and most of the damage was in our our bedroom and in the adjacent room and although we did lose the floors in the living room too the water did seep out into the living room the rug soaked up most of that water so the couch in and of itself survived um <laughs> it did not survive the renovation <laughs> so while all the workers were coming in and out even though they did their best to cover it up and everything it got a lot of stains on it and everything and so we decided that since we we're basically redid the whole house anyways, um, and we, you know, that we had to buy new furniture, and it's like, why don't, what, let's go ahead and, and, and go ahead and update our couch. Now, our couch right now, I, when we purchased it, I wasn't thinking at all about anything. We just basically went to, we went and sat on things and we're like, oh, it's comfortable and and everything and most of the time I don't use my stand when I cross stitch it's I, I only use it when I'm working on big projects so most of the time I'm using you know I use a, a, an 8 by 10 um, 8 by 11 key snap right like I, so I do I, I, I you know I hold it by hand I do that like I don't I don't use my stand I do use my stand for big projects though and one of the things was, is that it, it's, it just sat on the side most of the time, right? Um, but then when I would use it, the couch was not really set up for that. Like, it, the arms were too high, so I had to kind of sit in a weird angle to be able to use the stand and stitch. And so, it's not a big deal. We've gotten used to it. Um, but when we were buying this couch, I was like, we got to be sure that the arms are low enough. <laughs> That I can use my stand and and be able to sit in the couch and be comfortable and not hurt my back, as opposed to what I was doing now, which is sitting kind of cattywampus with a bunch of pillows. And um, and so, kid you not, we went into the store. We went to a couple of stores, but the one we when we finally were like, this is the one we're gonna get. 
Um, this is the one we think we want to walk. My husband went out to the car, brought my stand in. So we were walking through the furniture store with my case creation. I have a case creation stand. <laughs> we go to the couch. We move furniture around so that we would set it up. And we arranged the pillows and everything. Like, how am I going to stitch sitting in here? Can I put the stand in and everything? I can't. <laughs> Um, the best part is, is that the couch is also low enough that our our short dogs, um, now, now our dachshund mix, he's Jack Russell, he, she can jump. Um, but our Chihuahua Corgi mix, she's a little short and she has to kind of like, you know, rev herself up to, to be able to jump it. But it's going to be low enough that we think she'll just be able to do a little hop on, no problem. And uh, so, so, yeah, so there it is, me walking through the store with our stand. <laughs> but. Um, all furniture delivery is like behind by months. Um, and so, um, we, our bed was not supposed to arrive till June. Um, and it arrived early, but we did buy a matching dresser for it. And, um, and that's current estimated delivery date is, um, August. Um, uh, and so the couch is anticipated to arrive at the end of July. We'll see. We've been told that those are really kind of estimates and that it may be a little bit later than that. So we'll see. Um, by the way, like also like other things that are weirdly behind, um, pillow cases. I bought, I didn't buy enough of the, the one behind me. I didn't buy enough. I only bought, so we used to have a queen bed. So I had, so I was like, okay, well I'll just get two, whatever. It's not enough. I need one more pillow. Um, and so, because we have two, so in order for the bed to look balanced, it actually needs three. And so I went ahead and bought another pillow and matching pillowcase, and that's on back order. Like, the anticipated delivery of that is like June, July 15th or something. I bought it like in the beginning of April. So, why? It's COVID. I'm pretty sure it's all COVID and the fact that manufacturing is overseas and, and all that kind of stuff. Anyways. I think that's everything. Well, an hour. I mean, I guess considering I did add some additional projects, um, not too bad. I don't think I have anything else to add. Um, oh, I have one more little thing to share. I did join a little, um, it's like a pop-up, like it's not a constant. I guess it is a constant. They do it once a month. But I did go into a virtual stitching room in May. And um, y'all... I don't, I'm weird, I'm awkward, I'm an introvert. People are usually surprised by that because I'm not shy. So I, I preface this by saying I am not a shy person. I have no problems talking to people and making friends and people sharing life stories with me. That's not, that's not a, that is not a problem that I have. But I am, um, I don't think I'm awkward in general. But I'm odd, right? Like I'm weird and I have like different types of interests. I have a different perspective of the world and, you know, from, from norms. <laughs> and, you know, and I have done, a, I have great friends who, you know, I found my weird, like we have found each other, you know, and, and I love finding everyone in the cross-stitching community that similarly, you know, my nerds, my geeks, like, like. I, and I think that me sharing this story, like you'll feel this, like, like, I think that we're not, we're not awkward people. Like we're not, like, I think that when we find each other, like we're, it's, it's kismet, like it's, ah, my people, right? Like it's, uh, but I do think that you have to find your weird, you got to find your community. And so I went into one and I was just like, I would say things in the way that I say things. And the reaction would be kind of like, oh, that's weird. Oh, and I'll be like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's not the right group to say this to. And like, and everything. And I was just like, oh, this is awkward. Now I feel awkward. And, <laughs> and I was like, hmm, maybe I should stop talking. I'll just go back to stitching and just listen to what everyone else says. And then I'll, then someone will say something like, oh, I'm going to say something to this. And then I'm like, oh, that was awkward too. Okay. <laughs> oh, and, and. That is the short version of why Jesse no longer belongs to virtual stitchers. <laughs> and I don't know why. Like, when I joined virtual stitchers, I thought that they would be my group, too. 
Um, and I went to a handful and, and I never felt like it was really my people, even though everyone was very nice. So, so if I've been in one of these groups with you, this is not, everyone was super nice. Everyone was super inviting and super friendly. And, and it's not about like me feeling unwelcomed. I definitely felt very welcomed, but I don't know if I found my people, if that made sense. Right. Like if like where I felt comfortable and just chatting the way I normally would chat. Maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe I'll edit this out. We'll see. Anyways, I don't know. Um, try. Try joining chat groups. You never know. I'm not going to give up on them. I, 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 believe, I believe that I'm going to find my, you know, I only know one other person in real life who cross stitches, a friend of mine from college who I've been, who I'm still very much friends with. We do a monthly Zoom together. But it's, um, you know, she's the only other person I know in real life that cross stitches. Um, and um, I have learned that a couple of my quilting friends also have cross stitched in the past, but they don't do it actively now. And um, and so I, I like, you know, that's what's the beauty of floss tube, isn't it? It's um, this is oddly a very individualized hobby. Um, quilting had a natural community to it. I don't know why needlework wouldn't have done that. Um, but maybe in the course of time and history, it, it has turned it, you know, obviously people do get together. People get together in shops and they meet each other. But I didn't do that. I'm an introvert. It is not my natural style to just go someplace and just hang out. Like, it's just not what I do. And, um, and so I haven't given up on the virtual rooms. I'm going to find my people. When I show up, that's when, and then you're like, oh, hi, Jesse. It's because I'm trying to find my people. <laughs> you know, honestly, I think that Pam from Stitching Milan Good Enough, I bet she and I would be like chit-chatty. But, <laughs> so Pam, calling you out on it. But her room is for um, Hawker and Hollow. And I'm not doing a Hawker and Hollow. I'm not going to lie. There's a part of me that's thought about buying one just so I can join your little Zoom. <laughs> So we'll see, you know, you're like, you might inspire me to just to do a Hawker and Hollow. And the only time I stitch on it is in that Zoom because I'm just like, I want to find people I can chit chat with. That might be my kind of weird. Anyways. All right. With that, y'all, <laughs> on that weird note, I'm going to go off again. It's 1130 in the morning now. Man, I've already lost my morning. Um, I probably won't edit this until tonight. So I don't know if this is going up today or tomorrow, but sometime in the course of this weekend, this video will go up. And um, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go unpack my quilt studio, try to get a usable, and then tonight, Sailor Moon. Wherever you are, I hope you are having a wonderful and happily stitching good time. Take care, everyone. See you in a couple of weeks.